Good morning everybody and once again welcome back to the channel. Uh, this video I want to teach beginners uh, if you are using Snowflake how you guys can use the Snowflake copy command to load data from your S3 into your Snowflake tables. So this is a hands-on guide which will focus on the Snowflake copy command. So without wasting any further time I believe uh, a, a lab would be great to do right. So all right, so I'm on my screen. I have a script for you, which is called datagen.py. So this will generate some CSV uh, files on S3. If I run this quickly on my computer, and it looks like it is complete. It did upload a file. If I come here to my uh, S3 and I refresh, I see a raw, and I have one CSV file to play with. Now, once you have some files to play with, the next step is we need to create a storage integration in Snowflake. So we can do that by using the command create or replace storage integration. You can give it a name that you like. Type is going to be the external stage. Storage provider is going to be S3. Uh, the path, again, my path, my, my, my data points are probably inside a folder called raw CSV. So which is why I have raw CSV and then this is the ARN that I have snowflake integration role. I'll quickly show you what that looks like. Here you can see it is basically making sure that it has access to this particular bucket over here. Right. So hopefully that made sense. Right. So let's go ahead and create this. So I'm going to execute this one. So as you can see, the integration has now been created now. What I will do, I'm going to fire up a command called DESC integration and then the name of the integration. So let me fire that one. Now from here, we need to copy certain items. So let me collapse the window over here. Now, the, the important thing that I would need is uh, the storage AWS external ID. So storage AWS external ID, I need to copy this value and then storage AWS IAM user ARN. So storage AWS IAM user ARN, this is the one. So what I will do is I would want to copy these. Okay. And then I would have to head over to the IAM uh, role. In this case, it's this one, of course, go to trust relationship. I will click on edit. Now you see over here, I'm going to paste that one over here. So this value I will again copy. And then I'm just going to paste this one here. And then the ARN that I have storage AWS, uh, storage AWS IAM user ARN. So this one right here, copy that. Head over to my IAM role. Remove this, simply paste it. And then I'm going to click on update policy. So that's good, right? Now let me collapse this window down. Okay. Now, what we will need to do is we need to create a stage. So I'm going to do that. So create or replace stage temp DB dot public. This is the schema that I'm using. And this is the name that I'm giving people stage. You can give it anything that you like. And I'm going to simply execute this now. Perfect. The stage has now been created. Now, as you know, uh, inside my S3, over here, we have some CSV file, right? So what I will do is I will also create a file format object. So I'll do that by following command, create or replace file format, giving it a name, my CSV format, because you know, sometimes the CSV files are delimited by comma. Sometimes it's a tab or whatever that is. So you can define uh, those uh, configuration here. So for example, skip header to one, right? So you can basically configure that. So I'm going to execute that. This session does not have a current database called use. Oh, I, I, I see why. So I think I have to select the database from the dropdown. So I think I have selected that. And now let's try creating that. So again, makes sense. And now I will simply go ahead and create a table called people because I know the schema. So create or replace table temp db dot public dot people. These are uh, the columns and their appropriate data types. So if I execute that. Oh yeah, people already exist, right? So I'm going to say people temp. So uh, just going to create this table over here. Table has been created and then I can simply issue a copy command. So I can do something like 
copy into temp db dot public and i'm going to change the table name to people temp then from temp db dot public dot people stage we remember remember we made a stage object over here so quickly showing you this one right here right so we are saying that hey select everything from that stage object and copy it into this particular table file format we gave our file format object and basically we are saying if you encounter error what you want to do so i'm just saying continue so if i simply run this uh, as you can see i see that that file was loaded 100 items were passed parsed sorry which which makes sense and now if i were to do a simple select count star from people's temp and if i do i should see 100 as you can see over here right now one more thing i want to say if you again run this copy command uh, i think you know snowflake uh, has uh, you know built in uh, they i think they keep a track of like the timestamp so you will see no items will be loaded so if i accidentally fire it again so as you can see no data is parsed so, so basically you won't see any duplicates right so again it's just 100 right so now let's test this out so what we'll do is uh, we'll run the data gen.py okay so i will simply run this python code again which will generate a sample data so perfect and now if i execute my copy command another 100 items were loaded now if i do a count 200 items right so if i again load it uh, if I again accidentally run it, right, the copy command, here you can see it's not loading those files again, right? So it is keeping a track of those file timestamp and it's saying, hey, do you give me everything after that particular timestamp? So it looks fine, right? And of course, if you want, select star from temp. There you go, that's your data point, right? So I hope this video helps you. I tried my best to make it simple, easy, uh, and this Video shows you how to load data into Snowflake using Snowflake copy commands. Uh, remember, you can also use Spark. I, I am a Spark guy. I, I, I usually use PySpark heavily. So this is one way, of course, you can use copy command. Redshift also has a copy command, right? Uh, if you like Spark, you can use Spark and then read the data into uh, Spark as a data frame, and then you can append it or overwrite as a target using JDBC URL. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any further questions, uh, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to answer those questions. The code snippets that I used, for example, the Python data gen.py and the SQL, I'll leave them in the GitHub section. So in case if you want to try out, give it a shot. Okay. With that being said, keep smiling, keep programming, and I'll see you in the next video.